We're going, to, we're going to do some examples for the kernel and image of a linear transformation. So for our first example, we have a matrix A, um, 2, 3, 6, 9, and we're asked to find the kernel and the image of A. So the kernel is the set of all vectors that the linear transformation defined by this matrix uh, maps to 0. So the kernel is any vector x that maps to 0. So the way we find the kernel is we look for all x and y for this is, for which this holds. And uh, the way we solve this is by row reduction. And divide R1 by 2. And we can subtract from R2, 6 of R1. And we get 1, 3 halves, 0, and 0, 0, 0. So this tells us that um, if x plus 3 halves y equals 0, then um, the vector is in the kernel. So x equals negative 3 halves y, y equals y. We can parameterize this. Um, let's say that x, y has to equal 3 halves um, times 1 y um, can also just say t is our parameter t goes from infinity to negative infinity and this is the same thing as saying that um, the kernel, and this is the kernel of a the kernel of a equals the span of this vector here because it's all scalar multiples of that vector, so span of negative 3 halves, 1. So there's our kernel. And um, it has a dimension 1. And if we wanted a basis for our kernel, um, let's say beta is the basis for the kernel, but beta sub k, um, that basis would just be negative 3 halves 1. And um, by the rank nullity theorem, um, if you haven't watched that video yet, that's okay. Um, we know that since the dimension of the kernel is 1, and the dimension of the target space is 2, because we have a 2 by 2 matrix, the image should have also dimension 1. Let's go ahead and find the image. Um, the image is the set of vectors that the linear transformation maps to. So it's this set right here, whatever this equals. So that's going to be 2x plus 3y and 6x plus 9y. Um, we can also write it like this. 2 times um, x times the column vector 2, 6 and y times the column vector um, 3, 9. And that means that the image of A equals the span of these vectors. But um, actually, one of these vectors is redundant. Um, this is just a multiple of the other. And you can tell that's the case because um, when we found the reduced row echelon form of that matrix, we got only one leading one. So that means the second column is redundant. Specifically, it is 3 halves times the first column. 
we took 2 6 multiplied by 3 halves, we get 3 9. So actually, we can write this as the image is the span of 2 6. You could have also chosen 3 9. That doesn't really matter. And we know that this has to be the case because we found by the rank nullity theorem that um, the image has a dimension of 1. Now, if we wanted the basis for the image, we'll call it beta sub i. Would we just say the vector 2, 6? Now, let's do another example. Second example is we have the matrix A that equals 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and 3, 3, 3. And we're asked to find kernel of A and the image of A. So, by the same procedure, uh, we know the kernel of A is going to be um, the set of all x, y that maps to 0. So, we can just immediately put this in augmented form. And if we subtract r2 by r1, and we subtract r3 by r1, we get 1, 2, 3 on top, and then zeros for all the other entries. So uh, now that we're in r3, um, this should, tells us that x plus 2y plus 3z equals 0, y equals y, and z equals z. So, kernel of A is equals this set of x, y, z that maps to 0, which equals minus 2y minus 3z y and z, which we can also write as negative 2, 1, 0 times y plus negative 3, 0, 1 times z. And um, we can just write those as parameters, t and s, with t and s going from positive infinity to negative, or negative infinity to positive infinity. So the kernel of A is the span of these two vectors. Span of negative 2, 1, 0, and negative 3, 0, 1. And we had to check for linear independence, but we can all tell just by looking at it that these are, because we have a 0 here and a 1 here, and then a 1 here and a 0 here. Um, so, if we wanted the basis for the kernel, we could just write um, negative 2, 1, 0, and negative 3, 0, 1. So we omit the span. If we say span, we have an infinite amount of vectors. But if we just include these two, we have a basis. So, we can again check. Um, we see that this has a dimension of 2, this kernel. And um, by the rank, since we have an output of 3, because um, we have a 3 by 3 matrix, target space is 3, that means our image should be one dimensional. So, um, um, so now we're going to find the image, or they, and actually a shortcut to find the image. Uh, if we go back to the other example, is how each of these columns will end up being one of the um, vectors that spans the image. Um, you just have to remove the redundant ones that aren't linearly independent. So we removed this one last time because it was just a multiple of this one. So now with this example, we see that we have three columns and these two are just multiples of the first one. So the image of A can just be written as 
the span of our first column vector, 111. We could have chosen 222 or 333. Um, and it has dimension 1, as we predicted by the rank nullity theorem. And beyond the basis for the image, we would just say 111. So that's it for kernel and image.